Meat Boy is back and today we are not playing with meat. We are going to make chewy chocolate chip granola bars and I was in the supermarket looking for something that was approachable, fairly calorically dense and I thought of these granola bars and I started looking on the shelf, reading the ingredient list of all of these boxes and you know the ones that were organic that had decent ingredients still had a few things I wouldn't want to consume so in order to make the recipe healthy, minimally inflammatory, and something that I would feel comfortable feeding myself or my family every day, I decided to show you guys. And we've done several you know, non-carnivore dessert recipes in the past, such as chocolate chip cookies, cheesecake, uh, that you guys can go back and check out on my channel. In just about any granola bar recipe, you'll see oats used as the base, and that's what we have here. Interchangeably, you'll see some type of nut like walnuts or pecans, as well as rice cereal. Uh, so what we're doing today is actually a combination. We're gonna do rice cereal with some organic macadamia nuts that I dry roasted and salted. So this is gonna be the base that we're gonna cover with kind of a sticky syrup that we make from sweetener and fat, which is gonna be coconut sugar, our nature's glucose on Frankie's free range foods, as well as some coconut oil. Uh, coconut sugar is to me just a less inflammatory version of sugar, not as many chemical additives, not as much processing, has a nice deep like almost brown sugar caramel flavor. Uh, the Nature's Glucose is about 75% glucose as opposed to the typical 50% uh, that you see in regular honey, maybe even 40-45%. So overall it's less fructose, less stress on the liver, and just a healthier sweetener overall. And the reason we're using refined coconut oil is because it has a neutral flavor. It doesn't go bad, so we can leave this stuff on the counter for a long period of time. Uh, you could also use butter, uh, like high quality, organic grass-fed butter. For seasoning, we're using a vanilla powder, as well as a bit of salt. And for the chocolate, I actually have some chocolate chips which contain uh, some sugar and vanilla in them. Uh, you could use regular raw cacao chips, but to me, they just don't taste right. They don't taste as good. That would be you know, a slightly more natural alternative. First, we're gonna measure out the dry components and it's gonna be two cups of these quick oats. Uh, it has to be quick oats because steel cut, rolled oats need to be cooked. So, I mean, you'd have to like cook them yourself then somehow dry them out. It would be very, very difficult to do. Uh, of course, everything we have here is organic to remove as many agrochemical concerns as reasonable. And we want two cups of oats. Uh, for the macadamia nuts or whatever nuts you decide to use, about a cup or you could just use rice cereal. So we have over two cups. I'm actually just gonna add about half of this. Now, if you did this with just rice cereal, it would basically be a Rice Krispie treat, which by all means you can do. Uh, if you want, you can you know throw this in the food processor to, to break up the rice cereal a little bit more, which is something you should probably do. Everything else, excluding the chocolate chips, is going to go in a pan, about five tablespoons of this coconut oil. And we want one cup of sweetener total. So whatever you're using, whether it's organic sugar, honey, stevia, it's equivalent to one cup of sugar total. So I'm gonna do maybe a quarter cup of the coconut sugar. And some of you might be wondering, Frank, why don't you just use only the nature's glucose? It's because the dryness of the sugar gives it the stickiness. So if you don't have like a dry sugar in here, at least a little bit, the chewy bars aren't really gonna stick together that much. And we're gonna add our nature's glucose, about three quarters of a cup. And last for seasoning, we have about a teaspoon of vanilla powder. It's a bit overkill, but it'll be good. And then half a teaspoon of salt. All we have to do is bring this to a boil, let it go for a minute or two, and then we can mix in the dry stuff. Honestly, this would probably taste a lot better with butter, but for some reason, almost all the recipes were using coconut oil. Is this vegan? Oh no, we have honey in it. So I guess this is actually, unfortunately, close to being a vegan recipe. If you omit the honey and just use coconut sugar, yikes. After about five minutes, this is gonna start bubbling and just wanna make sure to stir. So at first the oil was separated from the sugar and now it's kind of homogenous together. And we'll keep this going bubbling for about a minute. That looks about good. So now we'll start adding the dry mixture. I'll add most of it and just make sure that we have enough in here to, uh, to add the rest. It looks like we can add the rest too. Okay, so we'll turn the heat off and uh, let me just taste a little bit to make sure it's sweet enough. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. It's not like crazy sweet like candy, but 
definitely sweet enough for a granola bar. Now we're gonna lay this out onto a greased sheet tray. We just wanna try to shape this into some type of rectangle so that when we cut it later, we have nice edges. We have to let this cool off a little bit before adding the chocolate because it will melt. Last time I made this recipe, it was actually just like a, a chocolate granola bar because there were no chips left. I just completely integrated. Hey, this would be a great recipe to sneak some protein powder into. Get some whey protein in there. Get some grass-fed butter for vitamins. Definitely, if you're looking to sneak some stuff into someone's diet. This is still really hot, so I just got some gloves on. I'm trying to pat this down without burning myself. Yeah, depending on how much effort you want to put into the presentation, you know, how much time you spend shaping this. Do you really want to screw up the sides that much? Do you care? It's up to you. So this has to cool off for five, 10 minutes, and then we can take the chocolate chips and kind of like press them into the top. After about 10 minutes, it's cooled enough where it's warm to the touch, still a little pliable, so perfect time to add our chocolate chips. Uh, the recipe calls for about six ounces. I'll just put on a couple at once and then press them in. In hindsight, maybe don't pack this so tightly, just wait till after you put the chips on. You almost have to kind of like press each chip in individually. So we'll do this for the whole thing. We'll try to get as much on top as possible because you know, the only chocolate chips are the ones on top. See, the chocolate's even, even melting a little bit, so we could have waited a little longer for this to cool off, but it should be fine. I think if you waited any longer for this to cool off, you couldn't even get these chips on here. You know what, honestly, that's not a bad idea. Instead of spending all this time putting these chips on top, just melt a little chocolate and drizzle it on the top. That'd probably make a lot more sense from a time perspective, and it would taste the same. Yeah, I don't know, this, this honestly isn't even, uh, this isn't even warm to the touch. So if you really wanted to keep the chocolate intact, what I would do is pop this in the fridge or even freezer, get it cooled off, and then just put the chips on afterwards. But we'll pop this in the freezer for maybe half an hour, we'll let it set up, and then we should be able to cut it and try it. Okay, well, looks horrible, nice. So we've definitely made things that look better, but you know, I tasted this and it tastes really good. So yeah, definitely pop this in the freezer for five minutes before you put those chocolate chips on. You should be good to go. As I try not to eviscerate myself with this knife. All right, there we go. Yeah, this is definitely, definitely really hard, but let's take a bite. I was tasting the mixture, so I kind of know what this tastes like, but let's see how it is at, you know, near room temperature with the chocolate added. Oh, this is like crack. This is really good. I mean, it's a chewy chocolate chip granola bar that tastes like twice as good as what you get in the supermarket. Texture's perfect. It's like chewy, but still has some crunch. It's sweet, but not too sweet. You get a little bit of that macadamia nut. That really adds a lot. I would definitely throw those in here. And yeah, I would definitely put, you know, some whey protein in here, try out the grass-fed butter, make this a little bit healthier and more nutritious. Those chocolate chips really make this a lot better, so. If you don't have those organic chocolate chips, I would definitely take some organic raw cacao and mix it with some vanilla and sugar and then drizzle that on top of the bars. I want to turn into a chubby little Italian boy. Regardless of what you want to eat, if you put in a bit of effort to source high quality organic ingredients and get a recipe with the correct ratios, you'll have both a delicious and healthy alternative that tastes a whole lot better. Uh, so let me know if you guys try out how you like this recipe. And honestly, if you add whey protein to this and butter, it would probably taste even better, which I find hard to believe considering how amazing this is. And for all you vegan fairy boys, just uh, omit the honey and you're good to go. So uh, thank you guys for joining me today. Just leave a comment down below, drop a like on the video if you can, share this on social media, share it to your friends, have them make it for their kids. But I hope you guys enjoy this and I'll see you for the live stream later at 3 p.m. Eastern time on the channel Frank Tufano.